So here we are on the embankment enjoying a cup of coffee. Uh, two great guests, Nick Williams and Sir John Whitmore. And we're having a wonderful conversation revolving around coaching. And Nick, it's been fascinating, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has. So John, you, you were talking about the future of coaching and you said actually one of the obstacles to the future of coaching might be coaches themselves. What did you mean by that? It's a fascinating thing to be saying. Well, the short answer is we need to rise to the occasion. Uh, coaching, uh, there's so much need for what coaches have to offer today that we need to be big enough to deliver that. And we must uh, s drop this sort of, um, what should I say, um, uh, you know, sort of village culture, sort mm. of... Because uh, I always uh, hear what you were saying when we were chatting earlier was about, you know, almost coaches see themselves as sometimes being neutral. They're there in service to a client, just being a mirror and asking questions. But I'm getting the impression that you think coaches need to be in service to the planet and, and in service to a greater cause than just their own work, in a way. Is that true? A absolutely. Um, and, and I agree entirely with the, in, in service to the planet because... Uh, I've always felt in coaching there's the context and the content mm. and what I don't do is to go into a corporation or something and talk about the content of running that corporation but that corporation operates within a global context yeah. and very often corporate people are quite naive about the bigger context mm. and I think this is where coaches do need to have the knowledge not you know, high levels of expertise in every field, obviously. But you must know the tough questions to ask. And which things are happening. So the impression, I, again, I'm getting from you is that you see coaches as actually being leaders and initiators of change and, and in a way not being neutral. But actually, do you see them as having their own agenda or being part of a bigger agenda? Well, I, I see them as being a catalyst. I would use the word the, the catalyst of more thinking. Now, in order to provoke that thinking, you sometimes have to introduce subjects that you need to, people need to think about. Right. I mean, the obvious example is the environment. You know, if, a, if the, a corporation is very, very engaged in their particular products and services, uh, they might know very little about the environment. And therefore, in order to, to bring that in, you've got to know something about it to write the, uh, ask the right questions. I mean, if, if you simply say, what is your environmental policy, and they say, well, we use, uh, you know, recycled paper and we've got, we've changed all our light bulbs. And if the coach doesn't know much about it, they'll say, oh, very good, you, you've done a lot, you know. And uh, somebody else would say, well, that's great, when are you going to start? So you see coaches as needing to be challenging by having information. So to initiate those difficult conversations sometimes. Yes. So uh, do, do you think they need to be overt about their agenda, though? Or do you think it needs to be more covert and mo more hidden? I personally, uh, if I was working with somebody, I, I would uh, express w the size of the parameters that I think affect that person. I would, I would express to them that your business is taking place within a context and if I'm going to be helpful to you, uh, we need to be able to explore the whole context because it affects you. That you it might be like a Trojan horse, you go in there for one thing, but when you're in there you start changing the agenda, which I don't, no, personally I, I, I don't would, think I is a good really thing to be doing. I about, about my position uh, and, and what I have to offer, and, uh, you know, and including in that giving the person the option to work with somebody else if they didn't like what I... So we're clear contracting the around the relationship Absolutely, and the contact yeah. and context of the relationship. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Very different view of coaching, so thank you very much indeed for that. I would call it a, an evolving An evolution. view of coaching because what I believe very much is that coaching needs to be responsive to the times and the circumstances mm -hmm. in the world today and I think what is being called for now is a different kind of response to what was appropriate ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're just keeping up with the time.